Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we're going to be talking about Gilded by Marissa Mayer and this is an advanced copy of the book even though it will be out by the time I post this. It's out on November 2nd, at least in America, I believe. I hope so. But I read an advanced copy of this book from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, so let's go. So I have known about Marissa Mayer for a while. Her books were like all over my secondary school library, but I didn't have a chance to fall in love with like the Lunar Chronicles like on my own time until earlier this year. And I really did fall in love with them. So you can imagine my excitement when this new book just appeared on NetGalley. And it's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. I recently read um, Small Favours by Erin A. Craig. I have um, House of Soul and Sorrow up there somewhere which is a book I also read at Sati and fell in love with. But Small Favours is also a Rumpelstiltskin retelling and I fell in love. And I have a huge spot for any, a huge spot, a huge soft spot for any kind of like folklore or fairy tale retelling. So when I found out that this was also a um, Rumpelstiltskin retelling, very exciting. This one is set in Germany with a lot of nightmare horror and gothic elements. And it truly feels like Maya did do her research when weaving in these elements. So that was something that I really did love. Everything about this book felt like it was made just for me, but I was still disappointed. So this is my, it's not a spoiler warning, there's no spoilers in this review, just a warning that this is not the five star glowing review that I think some people would expect. The first point is that the pacing just felt off. The first 60% of the book moved very slowly and the scenes between the climatic moments dragged and the climatic moments felt repetitive. I would have been happy if we had one less round of spinning straw. There are technically three than the finale. I would have been happy if we had two and just kept these three because I do believe in threes, especially in fairy tales. Um, the threats that the main character, her name is Cyrilda, I believe that's correct. The threats that she kind of came across throughout this first 60% kind of disappeared far too quickly. It felt very easy. So when the threats came up again, I was just, I was like, you know, she knows how to deal with this. I'm not invested. I, I don't feel like she's in danger. And also I just wasn't invested in the stakes. I'm not going to elaborate hugely on that because that's where the spoilers will come in. But I, the, the stakes did not feel like something Cyrilda should have cared about, let alone that I should have cared about. My interest picked up somewhere in between like the 60 to the 80% area and I just, it went so much faster than I was like rushed into this finale in a way that felt exciting rather than like actually rushed. I was very much swept away into it. So overall the book just felt far too long because Rumpelstiltskin is a very short fairy tale and this book dragged it out into about, it's over 500 pages, I believe, which after reading The Lunar Chronicles, I was expecting this to be a long book. But this short fairy tale um, was far too long. And yeah, it meant a lot of the scenes felt bland, especially if, like me, you are familiar with the original fairy tale. It also ends in a way that leads perfectly into a sequel, which I did not know that there was a sequel or that there will be a sequel planned when I first read this. So this book having a sequel is also part of the reason why I wished it was probably about a hundred pages shorter. There were also a few too many scenes for my enjoyment where something exciting happened and then the main character just woke up from a dream on the next page and it, there were some points where I was genuinely confused with which of these scenes were dreams or nightmares or if I was just misinterpreting what was actually happening in the story. And these dreams were also more enthralling than a majority of the parts of the real plot see weird pacing. But I will accept that this is a point about me not enjoying this aspect of the genre rather than judging the book too harshly. I did not know this would be a nightmare horror before going in. However, I do really love the God of Lies also being the God of Stories, even though one of my recent reads, I think it was The Midnight Lie, um, I had that quote almost exactly word for word. So I did love the plot twist, or maybe it was just a reveal, 
it was very well laid out as in like all good plot twists you can predict but it still shocks you, you know it was one of those and this big plot twist came around the 90 percent mark <laughs> it was very late into the story storytelling and blurring the lines between truth and lies played a very large role in this book and i love that it was used in a way to further the present plot and also tell the past without having to dip into like flashback scenes and other narrators i also did love Cyrilda as a character even though i did not love the romantic storyline she ended up falling into it felt very out of place and unnecessary and there was such a sharp contrast between this romantic storyline and the horror storyline when Cyrilda's like busy fighting for her life but her mind is busy just thinking about kissing some boy. It, it, was, it, it was like a big 180, it kind of just threw me out of the story a bit. Overall, I would, um, I rated this book three stars on Goodreads, it's probably more like a 2.5 stars. There were some moments I enjoyed, but it, they were very overshadowed by other books that did it better and moments that fell flat in comparison to what I already love from Maya. I keep, I've, I keep saying Maya or Maya, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this last name, but it's because I read this book so soon after another Rumpelstiltskin retelling, which was, in my opinion, immaculate, and also I read the Lunar Chronicles for the first time this year, and I'm a lot more invested in those characters than this one. Also, I didn't write this in the actual review, but pretty much every character other than Sorilda um, they just felt very two-dimensional. It was very much her story. <laughs> and even though it's 500 pages long, we didn't really get to jump into any other characters unless they were like directly relevant to the plot. And that kind of annoys me. But yeah, thank you for watching this review. If you've read this book or have intentions to, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Because overall, I say it's average, but I am still interested in picking up the sequel. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.